Well, good afternoon, chat. What a what a lovely day it is. What a lovely day for a purging. Oh boy, it's exciting, isn't it? Can you smell the despair that's in the air as the adpocalypse settles down once more upon our beautiful little land of YouTube? This cute little fiefdom, our little our little uh, vlogger empire, descends once more into chaos, brought about because. A sassy gay man at a news outlet, and a sassier gay man who does a podcast, decided to have a little bit of a slap fight on social media. And now everybody's ducking for cover. I know a lot of people have been watching as the news has developed today, and kind of over the last few days. A lot of people kind of laying low, don't want to say anything, don't want to speak up and draw attention to themselves, but that's not any fun. What's the point of that? You're afraid to say something because you might get a, a banhammer dropped on you. What's the point of saying anything at all in the first place? You know, I've uh, I've been on the internet a long time. A lot of people have. And I've watched its transformation throughout the decades. Starting off as kind of a hobbyist and enthusiast space for the nerdy motherfuckers that uh, never bathed. Fat, obese nerds sitting at their computer kits dirty, disgusting people going on to their news groups and their bulletin boards talking about nerdy shit nobody cared about. And then, of course, in the 90s came AOL and everybody and their grandmother was on the fucking internet. But still, it was a bit exclusive. Grandma didn't really understand much about it, never really left that AOL homepage. And all the grandkids, they were busy in the, I don't know, chat room saying horrible things and thinking that was the most epic shit ever. And that persisted for a while. But then a more modern era of the internet kind of came into being. Uh, Wild West. Numerous websites out there started to get uh, larger ones people would congregate at. Like something awful back in the, fuck, what was it, 1999, 2000? I mean, Jesus Christ, that's been 20 years. Oh, God, how old is Lotex? Shit, man. <laughs> oh, God damn. It's been a while. And of course... From an essay goon, you got uh, 4chan, and kind of just you know, evolved from there. And for quite some time, it was it was pretty fun. Using the internet was a, a joy to use. There's nothing like arguing with retards on the internet. I mean, it's a fun hobby to have, whether it's a image board or a forum. Um, you know, whatever avenue you decide to take, it's it's entertaining. It's something people enjoy. Nice way to vent, get a little bit of the stress out of your life going online and. Talking about dumb, nerdy shit or arguing with people about dumb, nerdy shit, we all kind of enjoyed it. And then mid-2000s, uh, the things started to change. Here come the video sharing platforms. You've got your blog TVs and you've got your early YouTube. Everybody thought that was a novelty. How interesting is that? I can, I can put up videos. Nobody really knew what to do. Your little 4x3 box of 144p talking about shit to an audience of maybe 10 people. But it was fun. But boy, that monetization came and things changed. You can make a buck now. You can make a living doing it. Everybody was really interested in it. Started a whole uh, cottage industry. of Kids growing up and not wanting to be astronauts or firemen or policemen. Wanting to be fucking YouTubers. Now, I've made a lot of jokes about that and I stay by most of, that jo uh, most of those jokes. They apply to me too. I mean, I've got a Patreon. I've got Super Chats on. All the shit I flung, you can fling right back at me. But it had an impact. Now here we are in a more modern era, and things are devolving, and rapidly so. Over the past three to four years, we've seen censorship sweep across the internet in a myriad of different forms. And, you know, the clock's running out. The good old days are, are coming to a close. I've talked about this multiple times before. I've talked about it on live streams. I've made videos about it. I've talked until I was blue in the face, and what's the point of talking about it anymore? But I feel like this might be getting close to the last hurrah. So let's let's have the conversation for the very last time. And just look at what's happened in the past five years when it comes to expressing yourself on the Internet. And that expression can take different forms. That could be you shitposting on an anonymous account on social media, that could be you trying to make a living and monetizing your content, trying to become some alt news service, or some skeptic YouTuber, whatever dumb gay shit you might be into. Maybe that's your thing, that's what you do. 
Maybe you run a blog. Maybe, I, I don't know what it is. But you've got all these people, all these different avenues of expressing themselves. And slowly, little by little, they've been whittled away. Now, I still hold true to the idea that 2016 was a real turning point. I think a lot of these large social media companies, a lot of these tech companies, a lot of these Silicon Valley folks weren't really giving shit posters on the internet uh, their due. They were looking at them as a non-issue. They didn't understand how social media and just different websites could amplify a message. So they see this candidate, they see this Donald Trump. He's run before, he's not really a threat to anybody, he said some funny shit and all the shit posters seem to like him, but who cares? He's not dangerous, they're not dangerous. You know, these Silicon Valley folks, these San Franciscoites, whatever, whatever the term would be, they run things. They're in control. They've got that shit under lock and key. What are you going to do about it? And so they didn't pay it the attention they, they probably should have. Because they fucking hate Donald Trump. They don't like conservatism. They don't like right wing really anything, to be honest with you. They have their own message, their own narrative, their own biases. But they didn't see it as a real threat. Fast forward to election night, and holy shit, Orange Man won. And I will tell you that I think election night was a moment that is probably defined crystal clear in their memories and will be historic to them for the rest of their lives. Because to them, personally, it was a failure on their part. And they will never fucking let that happen again. And you really have to understand this going forward when we start talking about this stuff. When we're talking about the Twitters and the Facebooks and the, the Googles and the Alphabets and the YouTubes. They fucked up. And they know they fucked up. And they will never let that happen again. And so after that election, you started to see things kind of amplify. Before that, we had had people talk about censorship and getting rid of trolls online. But it mostly focused on the concept of bullying. You know, people being dicks to each other. I wanted to clean that up a little bit. But things changed after the election. Suddenly there was a purpose behind the censorship. Suddenly there was a purpose behind what they were doing. And so what do we see happen? Well, we saw it gradually happen. And we saw it happen on the very outer edges, the very extremities of the internet. The extreme. We're talking Mountain Dew fucking snowboarding 360 extreme, my dudes. Areas of the internet. Well, the Daily Stormer, that's a terrible... Oh my god, Andrew Anglin's the fucking devil. We need to unperson him. Oh, and they went about unpersoning Andrew Anglin in a way you would not believe. They took away his fucking everything. He's not allowed to have a website. He's not allowed to have DDoS protection. He's not allowed to have funding. And nobody really said anything. Because they were assured, they were promised, this is just a unique case. Andrew Anglin is just an extremist. He says all this horrible shit. We need to get rid of him. Everybody was copacetic with that. Some people raised their voices, but not a lot did. And then what happens? Well, it stops being just the extreme cases, doesn't it? Now we're going to look at maybe alternative uh, media. Well, my God, Gab, have you seen what they post on Gab? Some horrendous things. We need to do something about that. They need to be dealt with. Let's take away their servers. Let's take away their payments. Let's uh, just cut them off at their knees. Gut them so they don't have a chance to compete. And again, people were like, well, that is kind of shitty, but okay. And so they kind of reeled it in a little bit more. Well, look at this Alex Jones character. He sells you donkey semen and tells you it will open your pineal gland and you'll be able to fight gay frogs off for the reptilian invasion that's coming. And more people started to pay a little bit more attention at that point because Alex, we need to take away his payment uh, options, we need to take away his platforms, his social media, his YouTube, everything. We need to contain him and quarantine him in an area of the internet where he can't be effective, where people can't watch him easily. But every step of the way, they started targeting more and more things. Until you kind of find yourself in the situation you're looking at now. Where Facebook and their CEO is talking to people in the European Union and people like Angela Merkel about instituting new hate speech policies that, are pri or that apply worldwide on Facebook for what you can and cannot post. For what and how you're dealt with when you break the rules. We all know what's been going on with Twitter. I mean, can you 
<laughs> can you, if you try to compare it to what it used to be like just six or seven years ago to what it's like today, it's night and day. You can't shitpost on Twitter anymore. Try calling somebody a faggot and see how quickly your account disappears. Oh, but that's hate speech. That's, you can't say that. Have we become this sensitive in this day and age where you can't shit talk anybody anymore without being automatically banned and removed from the internet? And now we're at the stage of YouTube, where we're on the third iteration of an adpocalypse. And, you know, I, I brought this up in a video, and I, I think it still applies, where it's the, the three Ds. They want to deplatform you, deperson you, and demonetize you. They want to make it impossible for you to have any motivation to say what you want to say, to communicate with other people, to think the things that you think to express yourself in a way that runs counter to what they want you to express. They'll take away your funding. They'll take away your PayPal account and your Patreon and maybe, God forbid, your bank account, like what happened to a, a person that was involved in the Proud Boys. His actual bank took away his checking account, which you would think would be highly illegal, but they did it nonetheless. They're going to deplatform you. They're going to remove you from social media. They're going to talk to each other. We found this out when uh, the James Damore thing happened, where he had uh, showed conversations between different people at different tech companies, talking about how they communicate and pass names back and forth. Hey, you know, we at Facebook got rid of this guy. So somebody at Twitter says, we'll get rid of him too. Somebody over at Alphabet passes the uh, message down to YouTube and says, you should get rid of him as well. And they're, they're just taken away, leading to them being essentially depersoned. You don't exist anymore. You have no more outlet to speak. You have no more outlet to say anything. It's crazy when you look at where we are right now. Where you look at the state of the internet as it exists right now. And how things function for anybody that wants to have fun or to make money in some meaningful way. <laughs> it's just gone tits up. It's gone full tilt and it's completely insane. When you look at the, the state of uh, things as they are now. And how do you fight back? Realistically, I'm asking you this, chat as you watch and listen to this. What do you think you're going to do? I mean, here's the ingeniousness, the uh, diabolical malfeasance behind what they're doing. And these Machiavellian masterminds. They remove you from the main sources of communication. See, if you want to spread a message, you don't really want to spread that message to people that are already aware of what you're talking about because it has no impact. Two people sitting in the same room agreeing with each other doesn't really accomplish shit. You want to be able to give that message to somebody that's completely unaware of what you're talking about. You want to win them over to what you're saying. You want to show them, hey, there's some fucked up shit going on right now. Maybe you might want to pay attention. And where's the best place to do that? Well, this is uh, the age of Web 2.0. It's social media. That's where you go to do it. But all these different companies have decided you're not going to be able to use social media to do it. So you look at what's going on right now with this kind of censorship wave after censorship wave that's taking place. And you can't use Twitter to get your message out. You're banned. Can't use Facebook. You're banned. Can't use YouTube. You're banned. So what mainstream avenue do you have when it comes to social media or outreach to get your message out there? Well, those are stripped away from you. Now you've got to go to an alternate site. You've got to find something like a gab. Well, again, that's you're sitting in the same room talking to people that agree with you. Maybe you're going to go to a, a forum or a more traditional website. Good luck doing that on Reddit. You'll be instantly removed from the platform. Maybe you'll go to 4chan. I mean, have 4chan, you can say whatever the fuck you want, right? They're hurting you. They're hurting you right now and to quarantine sites and giving you the illusion that you still have an impact and a voice. But as you sit there repeating your message to other people that agree with your message, that message doesn't leave your domain. It's stuck. It's artificially held where it is. There's no outreach to it. There's no way to amplify it or to spread it. And that's how this works. They've instituted little policies here and there, inching their way towards what they want. I mean, if you want to fuck somebody over, if you want to really screw the world up, you don't do it in a dramatic fashion instantly. You do it very methodically. You do it very slowly over an extended period of time. That's the most, <laughs> that's the most effective approach to doing it. 
people are generally lazy. I am, you are, we all are. We like to take the path of least resistance. And so when those changes are gradual and small and incremental, we don't get uh, our hackles up. We don't get fucked up about it as much as we probably should get fucked up about it. And so we allow it to happen. We become very passive about it. And, you know, inch by inch, little by little, they all add up. Until finally what you're looking at is that big explosive change does happen. But it just happened over an extended period. And the chance you had to say something is passed. It's over. Because a change already took place. You need to understand going forward that <laughs> the impact you might have had on previous elections, regardless of the country that you're in, that's done. That doesn't exist anymore. They understand what happened in 2016. They don't want that to ever happen again. I think it's highly politically motivated. And I think that, you know, frankly, they are laying the groundwork again slowly they've been doing it seeding it little by little to make it so when the next big election cycle comes up there aren't a bunch of people with fucking frog avatars on twitter and facebook and youtube talking about coughing <laughs> coughing fits pants of shit you don't exist anymore your message doesn't get out there you know if you were to go i, I think a great example of this Think of an obnoxious hashtag that pops up, especially on something like Twitter, where it's just something that's so fucking mockable, where it's something that you would laugh at and make jokes about. And then go click on it and really take a look at what you're you're dealing with. How many times do you think you're going to find those jokes anymore? I'll tell you what you're going to find instead. You're going to find blue check marks who are going to be saying the opposite of anything that would be considered funny or controversial, or edgy, or interesting, or different. <laughs> you know, those days, they're done. Twitter is radically transformed from what it used to be. YouTube is radically transformed from what it used to be. Facebook is radically transformed from what it used to be. You know, people say it's, oh, it's a black pill when you talk about things like this. It's so it's such a downer, Jim. That's a fucking reality. I mean, that's the truth. What do you, what do you want? I can't sugarcoat it for you. Uh, should I lie to you and tell you it's going to be okay? <laughs> Charge you 20 bucks for a t-shirt? Glad hand you and send you on your way? No. Things are fucked up. You're dealing with a censorship wave that is probably the death knell of the internet. I, I don't have any solutions for you. I don't have some grand vision of how you're going to fix that. But you're seeing it happen. And what we're seeing happen specifically today and over the last few days is just it's another vector, it's another factor, it's another avenue of that. So Stephen Crowder gets into an argument with a Vox journalist, Carlos Maza, I believe. And, you know, let me just say first off, this guy planned this. All right, he wanted the most leverage he could get for his little slap fight by waiting for Gay Pride Month. You know, June is LGBT barbecue month. So what better time to go after somebody that you're upset with than that month and to make a public tantrum about it? So he decides to go after Crowder. And YouTube, surprisingly, doesn't initially side with him. He actually, they, they actually kind of blow it off. You know, for whatever reason, and this is really bizarre to me and I can't honestly explain it to you, but over the last month, YouTube is, well, over the last two months, really, YouTube has been acting different than what I would have expected. It started with their flagging system. You know, before when you had an account, you'd get three strikes and then you were done. And that first strike would fuck you. It would fuck you right out of live streaming. It would fuck you out of a bunch of stuff for about 90 days. And then without any real publicity or talking about it at all, YouTube decides, hey, you know what? Fuck it. We were wrong about this. We're going to radically alter our entire system. We're going to give you a warning first where there are no consequences. Even more than that, with your first strike, you only get a week ding. So if you get a strike on your account after that initial warning and you want to live stream, you only have to wait a week. You got two strikes, two weeks. And then the third strike, your account gets closed. Now, I have no idea why YouTube would do that. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm also massively surprised that they wouldn't have tried to be more public about that. You think it would have generated goodwill. And then the situation with this journalist happens and they actually sided with, with Crowder right away. I mean, it was, it was really bizarre. 
Again, contrary to what you would think they'd be doing. But this guy, this sneaky little motherfucker, he knew how to play the game. The PR game. Get that message out there. Package it in a way that's going to have the biggest, broadest appeal. And then just hammer the motherfuckers with him, uh, with it until the, he gets what he wants. And so YouTube buckled and they took away his monetization. But the thing is, it wasn't just Crowder that lost his monetization. It wasn't just Crowder that had uh, videos removed or had his account removed. It was a, a ton of people. So we're going to look over this slab fight. And we're going to look over the people that got affected for whatever reason, because there are numerous people that got fucked. And this isn't just about a loss of revenue. It's about a loss of their fucking channels or about being able to put up videos. And some of these people aren't political. They just make fucking jokes. I mean, we're reaching a point where you can't make jokes on this platform anymore. Where you've got to word them in such a way so it's the least offensive to the most people. Which, if you know anything about comedy, should tell you, that's, that's the worst approach you can take. When something's the least offensive that it can be, it's also the least funny that it can be. So let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the damage that's been going on. As our little friend Carlos uh, decided to start uh, a fucking slap fight. Uh, right now on Twitter. And I know Steven Crowder is doing a live stream right now. Maybe that's what you want to watch if you want to. Uh, go take a look. I hear he's got details about things that are going on. Maybe he's got more information. Right now on Twitter, they've got the Vox Adpocalypse, which is the hashtag that it's under at 33,000 tweets. We'll see how long that one lasts before it goes tits up. <laughs> uh, Carlos Maza. That's that's who I'm looking for. God. It's just, it gets tiring, I think, after a while. Doesn't it? You know, I remember, there used to be a time on the internet where you could just fucking make fun of people. God, that was great. God, it was great to be able to laugh at idiots. That's gone. You can't really do that anymore. Because no matter who you're making fun of, they're going to find some reason to claim they're a protected class and that the reason you're making fun of them is specifically that. There's going to be a day, probably in the next couple of years, where you can't <laughs> where you can't say that a furry that fucks dogs is a degenerate and make jokes about that or even statements about that. That'll be taken away from you. They'll make that a fucking protective class. <laughs> you can't you can't tell me not to fuck my husky. That's against my rights. You two ban him. <laughs> That's where we're going. God. God, what the fuck? Who's at the who's at the wheel on this bad boy? This shit's out of control. I hate talking about this shit. I've talked about this shit so fucking much. I just want to laugh at retards. But even that's being stolen from me. You know how the, just angering that is? Depressing it is? I just want to laugh at stupid shit on the internet. And we've reached the point where that's almost going to become impossible. Where it has nothing to do with fucking politics. Nothing to do with uh, PC versus anti-PC. You just can't even crack a fucking joke anymore. They're going to take that away from you. It's just going to be some sanitized shithole Disney fucking attraction with uh, car commercials shoved up your ass. That's going to be the future of the internet. Sanitized, whitewashed shithole that nobody enjoys. Where you're lucky if you can get uh, a fucking score to your sports game without being told what a terrible person you are. Oh, you're rooted for the Red Sox? What are you, a racist? God almighty. And this guy, this guy is such a piece of work. This Carlos Maza guy. You ever met a motherfucker that's just not satisfied? I want you to think back to when you were in uh, school. Probably elementary school is going to be the best example for you. You ever do something? Do something that was wrong in the classroom? Maybe told a racy joke? Uh, I don't know, flicked a fucking rubber band in somebody's face because you thought it was funny? And there was that one kid in the class? You know, that one tattletale motherfucker that nobody liked? Who would run to teacher immediately and say, Oh my God, did you see what Anon just did? He said a horrible thing. He threw, he flicked that rubber band right at that motherfucker's face. That's who Carlos Maza is. And he's that kid to a T. Even worse than that. Not only does he want to tattle on uh, on you to the teacher, he's not satisfied with his tattling. His, his tattling hasn't been devastating enough. So he wants to make sure 
just as much damage can, as can be done happens. So I'm going to... Give me a second here while I scroll down to where this shit show starts. We'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at the people affected. We'll see the, the way he went about this by making just massive public statements and crying about this. About going against anybody and everybody that would dare say, Boy, Carlos, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> he, he tweeted out like a thousand... He cries about being bullied. Ah. Oh. Somebody send him a copy of Tyler the Creator's tweet. <laughs> Cyberbullying? What the fuck are you talking about? And turn your computer off. Oh, it's got all the fucking buzzwords in there. Toxicity. Just all that shit. All right. God, I'm sorry. This is taking a little longer than I expected. You have to understand. This dude, this dude is whined to YouTube for like a week straight. And he has not stopped crying to YouTube, demanding that Steven Crowder, the most milk dose, fucking cookie cutter conservative, just be destroyed. So let's let's find out where this it starts precisely. Uh, yeah, there we go. I think it's uh, June or right at the end. Okay. Yeah, here we go. So I have a pretty thick skin. Oh, do you, Carlos? Do you have a pretty thick skin? <laughs> okay, let me show you the guy that's fucking everybody over on YouTube at this specific moment. Our Vox journalist. Let's just read what he had to say. <laughs> this fucking dude. Uh, I think this should bring it up. Yep, there we go. Okay, this is Carlos Maza. <laughs> otherwise known as gay wonk. So I have a pretty thick skin when it comes to online harassment, but something's been really bothering me. Since I started working at Vox, Steven Crowder has been making video after video, debunking, strike through. Every single video has included repeated overt attacks on my sexual orientation and ethnicity. Here's a sample. Let's take a look at the sample of the brutal abuse that Carlos Maza has been so suffering. Before we get to the video... Uh, with our favorite, favorite lispy sprite <laughs> from Vox. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's bonkers. You're being given a free pass as a crappy writer because you're gay. That center line on his little queer graph there. <laughs> what is, what is well, that Well, now line? the graph is queer? It's violence, filth. Okay, so the little queer can eat his chips all nonchalantly. It's code for rape, Mr. Queer Eating <laughs> Chips on the Vox channel. Mm -hmm, chip, 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 but you can eat just one, like dicks. This is what Mr. Gay Vox wants to do. Mr. Lispy Queer from Vox. What, what, what were you holding, Gay Latino from Vox? <laughs> Even his hand movement and fast motion is gay. Now we're here with the short-haired angry lesbian on Skype. <laughs> and cable news, cable news bitching. Two gay guys sitting there eating a banana. We get the symbolism oh, there. Oh, the oh. truth is... So there you go, chat. Just to bring you up to speed, that's the horrible abuse. He said he has a lispy voice and called him gay. Which, surprisingly, uh, I think maybe the guy whose handle is Gay Wonk might actually be gay. And uh, he kind of does have a lispy voice. <laughs> so it's not like Crowder made up some stereotype about a gay dude who's got a lisp. Carlos actually does have that. He's got a little bit of a lisp to him. I'm sure I put a target on my head by daring to say Lispy Carlos sounds Lispy. But let's move on. I've been called an anchor baby, <laughs> a Lispy queer, a Mexican, etc. <laughs> okay. These videos get millions of views on YouTube. Every time one gets posted, I wake up to a wall of homophobic racist abuse on Instagram and Twitter. Last year I got doxxed, and it scared the fuck out of me. My phone was bombarded with hundreds of texts at the exact same time. The messages? Look at these terrible debate Stephen Crowder. How will he live? Oh, somebody call witness protection. Carlos Maza has been asked to debate Stephen Crowder. I weep for him. These videos make me a target of ridiculous harassment. It makes life sort of miserable. I waste a lot of time blocking abusive Crowder fanboys, and this shit derails your mental health. That being said... I'm not mad at Crowder. Boy, is that a lie. There will always be monsters in the world. I'm fucking pissed at YouTube. Which claims to support... Here we go. It's LGBT creators. And has explicit policies against harassment and bullying. 
notice the timing of this. This is the avenue, this is the vector he's going to attack Crowder at. You know, talking about how this is a, a threat to LGBT creators. Right before LGBT Pride Month begins. He's setting it up. He's getting it ready. He really wants to have as much impact as he can. This has been going on for years. And I've tried to flag this shit on several occasions. It's journalists, by the way, folks. But YouTube is never going to actually enforce its policies because Crowder has 3 million subscribers. And enforcing their rules would get them accused of an anti-conservative bias. Which is all I have to say. I work my fucking ass off to create smart, thorough, engaging content for YouTube. A company which claims to give a shit about LGBT creators. And it's miserable to have that same company help facilitate a truly mind-melting amount of direct harassment. Oh, our poor boy here. My family sees this shit. I've had to explain to my much younger sister what the fuck a Steven Crowder is and ask my siblings not to respond. It's exhausting. I wish YouTube gave enough of a shit to stop it. Do you notice the amount of fucking tweets? <laughs> Do you see this shit? This is all one, one thread. One thread about this. Taking in YouTube multiple times. YouTube does not give a fuck about queer creators. YouTube does not give a fuck about marginalized creators. YouTube does not give a fuck about diversity or inclusion. YouTube wants clicks, clicks, clicks. I, I have to disagree. Anybody that's watched the god-awful YouTube Rewind, <laughs> that's nothing but diversity being shoved up your ass. What are you talking about, Carlos? Harassment isn't siloed either. Every time he makes one of these videos, his fans flood the comments on the original Vox video. So a piece I spent four weeks working on is drowning in homophobic and abusive comments and downvotes. Other Vox fans see it. It's humiliating. So he's upset that he makes videos that get made fun of. And that Steven Crowder decided to make fun of his stupid fucking videos. And because Crowder made fun of his stupid fucking videos, he's getting downvotes and comments saying that he's an idiot. That's, what, that's what's up his ass. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like being not taken seriously. I cannot explain how awful it is to see a video you f where you're called a lispy queer pass a million views. Thousands of comments piling on. How the fuck are LGBT people expected to produce interesting content in this environment? Yeah, I know the tragic story of Steven Crowder bullying people off of YouTube. So many of them. So many broken LGBT bodies left on the roadside. <laughs> By Crusher Crowder, destroyer of the gays. A lot of people have pointed out that Crowder is wearing a Socialism is for Fags shirt in several of his videos. Turns out he sells that shirt to his YouTube fans and probably displays it in his Twitter cover photo. What are these platforms doing? If Crowder loses his channel, I'm going to get hit with another avalanche of abuse and will likely get doxxed again. That's what's so fucked up about these platforms. They create wildly powerful monsters and then ask the targets of the abuse to draw further attention to themselves. Love to sit at home editing together a clip of my abuse in order to publicly beg a platform to pay attention. Love to be an adult gay person and still have my identity marked by public humiliation. Wow. You know, this reminds me of a Key and Peele skit. There's two dudes working in an office. <laughs> and one dude, I can't remember which it was. I think it was uh, uh, Key, uh, is looking at Peele and he's like, he's fucking annoyed with them. And the dude's super flamboyant. He's like, you're just doing this because I'm gay. He's like, no, I'm, I'm calling you out because you're an asshole. <laughs> you being gay is not the primary reason that I'm calling you out. You are an asshole. That's the main reason. But Carlos is making it all about that gay identity. So this is what started it. Carlos sending 840,000 fucking tweets to YouTube, demanding that they do something about it, demanding he be deplatformed, that he uh, have his monetization taken away. He talked about it for fucking days, talking about how much money Crowder was making, how much he was pulling in from t-shirts and YouTube ad revenue, how this was damaging to Vox. Now, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't Vox get like $200 million from what was it, ABC or NBC to run their fucking operations? So if Carlos works for Vox and is making videos for Vox, why is he trying to make it sound like he's some independent content creator? Like he's one of the little guys. <laughs> he's not one of the little guys. 
He's working for a fucking company that has hundreds of millions of dollars at their disposal. But he's trying to really sell it as the innocent, independent gay guy that's being harassed by big bad Steven Crowder on the internet. Holy shit. I don't know. Am I crazy, chat? Uh, let me let me try to get a little interaction going here. I've been going on for a minute to see what you think. I don't know. Chat, do you find this to be disingenuous? I do. I think Carlos Maza has uh, been very precise in his messaging and his timing of his messaging. I think he's trying to go for maximum damage and maximum impact because people made fun of his ass. He talks about being thick-skinned, but he can't handle being made fun of. That's really at the core of this. Steven Crowder made fun of him. And lots of people, for whatever reason, liked the video making fun of him. And he can't fucking handle it. So he wants this dude fucking destroyed. Seen a lot of honk honks in the chat. Now somebody said $400 million. I'm not sure how much Fox has, but I'm fairly certain they're funded fairly well to do their shit. Yes, he's he's definitely vindictive. I will agree with you on that, Jeff. So they they write, <laughs> they they and they coordinate their articles too. Um, I think this was this one is from yesterday. Yeah, let, let's put this up. Okay, you need to understand. Carlos makes a statement. Oh my God, Crowder's so terrible. Gay Pride Month begins, and then you start getting articles from companies like The Verge and others. So let's just take a look at one of the articles. This is one that Carlos was promoting. Uh, just to see what the coverage looks like. YouTube decides that homophobic harassment does not violate its policies. The company sides with edgy commentator Stephen Crowder. YouTube has at last formally responded to explosive and controversial feud. Get over yourself. <laughs> Couple of fucking idiots on the internet. The explosive and controversial feud between Vox writer and video host Carlos Maza and conservative YouTuber Stephen Crowder. The verdict... YouTube says Crowder did not violate any of its policies, and that Crowder's YouTube channel will stay up, despite his repeated homophobic slurs directed at Maza and videos posted to YouTube. Crowder has routinely, over the course of years, made derogatory and mocking remarks about Maza's sexuality and ethnicity, when making videos attempting to, debu or to debunk the Vox video series Strike Through. Crowder likened his remarks to jokes calling them harmless ribbing in a response video earlier this week. They really are pissed about this t-shirt shit, by the way. Crowder also sells a t-shirt on his website. Oh, well, that's something I've never heard of. I love how they act like merchandising is some new thing. I knew, there's this dude, he's dead now, but there was this dude, Helsing920, back in like 2006, when nobody gave a shit about YouTube. This motherfucker was selling clocks with his face on it. Stop acting like Crowder selling t-shirts is some amazing fucking thing you've never heard of. After days of silence, YouTube now says it doesn't think Crowder's homophobic and racist slurs included Crowder calling Maza a lispy queer and a gay Mexican qualify as harassment. <laughs> Notably, the company did not mention the phrase hate speech, indicating it does not classify Crowder's homophobic mockery as such. Our team spent the last few days conducting an in-depth review of the videos flagged to us. And while we found language that was clearly hurtful, the videos as posted don't violate our policies. An open platform is crucial for us to allow everyone from creators to journalists to late-night TV hosts to express their opinions within the scope of our policies. Opinions can be delete or deeply offensive, but if they don't violate our policies, they'll remain on our site. I believe this is their... Let me see if this is their tweet chain. Yes, this is. This this is their response. Basically, they listened to what this guy had to say. They took about four or five days, and they said, not really a big fucking deal. <laughs> Maybe you should calm the fuck down, dude. He calls you a lispy queer. Get over it. <laughs> it's a fucking joke. In response, Mazza said he was stunned by YouTube's verdict. On Twitter, he wrote, I don't know what to say. YouTube has decided not to punish him. After years, he spent two years, after two years of harassing me for being a gay Latino. Okay, so how is what Crowder said, if you're self-identifying as a gay Latino, if, him, if he calls you a gay Mexican, what's the harassment, Maza? I don't know what to say. 
To be crystal clear, YouTube has decided that targeted racist and homophobic harassment does not violate its policies against hate speech or harassment. That's absolutely batshit policy that gives the big bigots free license. He also pointed out hypocrisy. See, here we go. Celebrating LGBT Pride Month. Again, he, he was very specific about picking his moment. So, you know, at first, YouTube didn't really give a shit. They actually sided with Crowder. Again, contrary to what you would expect them to do. But Mazza would not let it go. Had to keep fucking pushing it. Had to keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. Until finally, YouTube buckled. And they took away his fucking monetization. But more than that, because they got so much shit from Mazza and his cohorts in the journalistic realm, they implemented brand new policies. In fact, if you go to your YouTube channel and look at uploads, if you go into your creator studio, you're probably going to see the new policies that are up. So let's take a look at the new revised hate speech policy. Uh, let, let's take a look at this. I'll just read it to you. Why not? Uh, while we've always had policies that prohibited hate speech on YouTube, on June 5th, again, that's right after all this shit, we announced some changes to our hate speech policies. You can learn more about those changes here. Hate speech is not allowed on YouTube. We will remove comment prom or comment or content promoting violence or hatred against individuals or groups based on the following attributes. So here you go, folks. You can't joke about this anymore. Here's your list of shit you can't talk about. Age. Caste. Disability, ethnicity, gender identity, nationality, race, immigration status, religion, sex and gender, sexual orientation, victims of a major violent event and their kin, veteran status. If you see content that violates this policy, report it. What this means for you. If you're posting content. Don't post content on YouTube if the purpose of that content is to do one or more of the following. Encourage violence against individuals or groups based on any of the attributes noted above. Incite hatred against individuals or groups based on any of the attributes noted above. <laughs> they have examples. Here's some examples of hate speech not allowed on YouTube anymore. I'm glad this violent event happened. They got what they deserved. Referring to persons with the attributes noted above person with the attributes noted above are dogs or person with attributes noted above are like animals so because <laughs> i want you to understand what this means because we have we have gender identity uh and sexual orientation and you can't say you can't i can't make fun of furries we can't make fun of furries on youtube anymore this policy is a blanket coverage for furries you can never say furries are like fucking animals. Furries are degenerate dogs. That's a no-no. If, if you say that, you're gone. If you say the following statement, furries, also known as fur fags, that go to conventions to fuck donkeys or degenerate motherfuckers and act more like animals than human beings. You know, you can't say that statement. That's going to get you, that's, that's a no-no. That's not allowed. Don't say that. You need to embrace your furry brothers. <laughs> what happens if you violate, or what, what happens if your content violates this policy? If your content violates this policy, we'll remove the content and send you an email to let you know. If this is the first time you posted the content, we'll give you a warning. And then it goes on to their, obviously their, their new steps, their programs. <laughs> Should I also mention that Carlos Maza's penis is on the internet? Why is that? Carlos, why is your dick on the internet? <laughs> why am I seeing people post pictures of your penis? What is it with the internet and people showing their dicks off? <laughs> you know, this pro Jared thing was weird enough. Now I've now got people posting pictures of Carlos's dick. How did they get it? Where did his penis come from? <laughs> why is his penis floating out on the internet in the first place? And a better question, is Steven Crowder going to print it on a t-shirt and sell it for 20 bucks? Steven, could you get a could you get an outline of his penis and put it on a shirt and said it's the little things that matter and sell it for twenty dollars? What do you think Carlos would do in that circumstance? <laughs> do you think he'd be mad? Probably. I shouldn't make those jokes. I'm treading a careful line here that <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no, Carlos's cock makes pro Jared look hung <laughs> for the people in chat that are asking. 
Oh. What the fuck is going on with the internet? I mean, I'll tell you guys. The age of laughing at shit is, is just coming to an end. But, uh, yeah, let, let's talk about the people that have been kicked off. Just the, uh, just throw fucking names out so you can see who the fuck's getting hit by this shit. Because some of it makes no sense to me. I'll be honest with you. It doesn't make any sense as to why certain individuals are getting, are getting fucked. Uh, Boogie2988. His videos, his Francis videos, uh, he was posting on his Twitter account, demonetized. Now, he's put in a, an appeal. I don't know what the status of that appeal is. But if you know who Boogie2988 is, he is the most inoffensive person on YouTube. He's always made fun of. Everybody gives Boogie shit for being a, a fence-sitting cuck. You know, the ultimate centrist. If Boogie's having his shit fucked with, you, we all need to be worried. We all need to be worried if that dude's having his shit fucked with. Uh, Varg Vickerson, his, his fucking channel's gone. Red Eyes TV, he got hit. Sinatra says, demonetized. Cog, demonetized. Just multiple people getting hit. Uh, JF Gierpe, I believe they took away his subscription feature. You know, the little membership thing that they do? They're probably going to demonetize him completely. <laughs> one dude, one dude actually had his channel demonetized. And when he wrote to YouTube to find out why that happened... They wrote back and said it's because he was abusing capitalization of his titles. <laughs> if you capitalize the words in your titles on your videos, demonetized. Videos taken down. That's insane. That's so, that's so far past the point of rational, it's fucking bonkers. <laughs> your punctuation and grammar wasn't up to snuff. Get them off our fucking platform. What are you doing? What in the ridiculous shit is this? Yes, it's it's fucking honk honk, Chad. It's fucking clown world. God, Jesus. I don't understand it. I feel like I woke up at a different dimension. It just keeps getting fucking stupider by the minute. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. More than likely, I am... My channel hasn't been affected yet, but it probably will be. Uh, you know, I'll continue posting videos as long as I can. If I can't live stream here, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll be forced to go over to D Live and do my streaming over there. You know, I didn't really have much planned going forward with that, other than the E3 streams and potentially one about a crazy dude that I've been following for a little while here. I thought would have been fun, but you know, I'm not. I'm not one of these guys that monetizes my YouTube videos or has relied on it as a source of uh, needed income. But I know a lot of these, you know, there's a lot of these fucking small channels, uh, whether they're political or not, or they're just telling edgy jokes and they monetize their shit to make a few bucks. Uh, just having it snatched from them, having their videos pulled down, having their comments removed, uh, just getting deplatformed. It just, you know, happenstance, uh, a coinky dink that a majority or a large portion of them have been political in nature. You know, Maza's saying that, oh my god, oh, you know, YouTube doesn't want to be accused of having an anti-conservative bias. Well, you know, a lot of their actions seem to fall in line with that. And I don't think they've been, you know, really hiding that. We've seen Breitbart had, uh, what was it, a leaked uh, Google meeting after uh, the elections, where they all got into a literal hug circle <laughs> and started crying because Hillary lost. James Damore really should have opened people's eyes to what's going on at that company. But, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Shit's happening. People are getting uh, knocked off. So I would expect this is going to hit a lot of people, especially if they're going after people doing comedy. Uh, if it's starting to move just past the point of political stuff into edgy comedy or jokes, depending on who your audience is. You know, I had a, a, a video I put up about Twitter a while back, years ago, talking about their attempt at how they shadow ban. And it was really kind of an ingenious approach. You know, they figured out if they banned you completely or if they cut you off from everybody else, you'd notice. If it was a shadow ban like they did on Reddit, you'd, you'd fucking notice, right? But if they could instead take out the top 100 people of your audience that retweet your shit and get other people to talk about it, they've, they've muzzled you. And they muzzled you in a way that you can't really put your finger on. 
So it's like you're screaming into a void and nobody's paying attention and you can't figure it out because other people are seeing what you're saying, not the people, though, that would spread what you're saying. And I wouldn't be surprised if YouTube has implemented something similar where they look at, you know, where they look at these audiences, let's say a collective group of people, and they say, all right, we've got this collective group of a couple hundred thousand people, and they watch this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. You know, and those first three guys, they're political. Let's get rid of them. Well, it just leaves that last guy. He's not really political, but he appeals to this specific group. So get rid of him, too. I wouldn't be surprised if they implemented a system somewhat like that. <laughs> you, know, you can't even tell jokes on this fucking platform anymore. I mean, what the fuck is going on? It's crazy. Oh, and I know these people are... You're going to see all, many, all these fucking hashtags. I don't even know what they're going to call it. The Vox Adpocalypse. Voxgate. I'm sure they'll come up with some snazzy fucking title as people put out a shit ton of fucking content about it. But you know, I, I think it should be said too. One of the reasons I haven't really spoken up a lot about it after saying my piece previously about this is I just don't want to get stuck in the back and forth of what I see is going to happen. And you know, I'm going to say it bluntly right now. If you think Donald Trump is going to save you from this, <laughs> you're fucking kidding yourself. Right, you have about as much chance of being saved on social media from censorship by Donald Trump as that fucking wall does of going up. Understand that's a political strategy for the next election cycle. You think the Trump administration isn't aware that people are getting censored and hasn't been aware they've been getting censored for years now? Well, they fucking know it. They're talking about it really, you know, a little bit here and there right now because they're counting on you being pissed off about it because that's going to be the election strategy for 2020. Oh, you guys are getting censored. Yeah, too bad we didn't do shit about it. <laughs> but vote for me and maybe I will next time. And of course, people on the left, they don't fucking, they're so stupid they're going to fall for that too. Oh, well, ban more people. There's going to be some bullshit political machination between two different fucking groups. And we all get fucked because of it. It's very, it's a very dark day with the black pill being shoved up your ass. <laughs> Mega beats blowing the fuck out. Oh, uh, yeah, I hear angry squeaking as we speak. But I don't think Trump's going to really do shit about this. I think he's going to actually let it kind of ferment a little bit. Let it get a little bit worse, make you a little angrier. So you go out there and vote. That's my, that's my fucking uh, take on that. This all could have been prevented, guys. If you had just if you just elected Sargon MEP and we got Donald Trump to tweet Gamergate 42, <laughs> this never would have happened. But you just couldn't do it, could you? <laughs> now we're all going to be living in the gutter, selling each other <laughs> fucking Teespring t-shirts as we dumpster dive for our next meal. That's our future. Sargon was going to save us. And we forsook him. Oh, sorry, I'm having a bit of a cigarette here. Having a bit of a think. I wasn't really planning on covering this, but I saw a bunch of people getting their channels fucking yanked away, and it's not going to... It's going to ramp up. It's going to ramp up like it did with every other program and implementation of whatever, uh, where it's, you know, 100 people today, 1,000 people tomorrow, 10,000 a month from now. It's just all these fucking people getting taken down. I don't know where they're going to go. You can't really go to Twitch. Where are you gonna, what are you going to talk about on Twitch TV? They're going to fucking ban your ass right away. You could go to BitChute, but they can't live stream. You could go to DLive, but are they going to survive? I have no idea. I mean, PewDiePie went over there to live stream. Initially brought in, what was it, 125,000 people on his first stream? On his most recent, he had 50,000. If you, if you go look at DLive right now, they have less of an audience actively watching people than fucking Stream Me did. So, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Dark day. A dark day for us all. I'm going to read me these fucking super chats. Make this fucking money while I still can. Oh, I got $100 from Joshua Moon. I'm already on the list. So let me say what everyone is thinking. One day, they will unperson someone who will physically unperson as many of them. So he can in kind. Look at how badly Mumkey et al. are affected. It's coming soon. Have a nice stream, Jim. 
Yeah, Mumkey got uh, he got fucked right off the platform, and then kind of driven into his own corner of the internet. I mean, it's just it happens everywhere. All these people getting deplatformed, all these people getting depersoned, all demonetized. Why are credit card companies and banks getting involved in this? Why the fuck does MasterCard have a say about what kind of stupid jokes I tell on the internet? How absurd is that to you? I want you to think of how fucked up that is. MasterCard. It's a fucking credit card company. Why do they have any say over the knock-knock jokes I tell on YouTube? (laughs) Why the fuck is Wells Fargo taking away people's bank accounts because (laughs) because they want to walk around with a squeaky toy and say MAGA? (laughs) Who who the fuck are these organizations to wield that kind of power? (laughs) What are you going to do? You're going to go to the alternative? You got very few choices. People are lucky Dick Masterson started his own goddamn Patreon alternative. Otherwise, a lot of people would be fucked. Hey, what happened to Dave Rubin and uh, Jordan Peterson? Uh, did they get too busy washing their penis to make that Patreon alternative they told everybody they were going to do? They didn't mind moving off half the people using Patreon off-site and then not building any alternative to it. <laughs> but who did? Dick Masterson <laughs> started his own fucking site to try to do it. Every competitor that creates a site to to try to fight back against this inevitably gets fucked. I mean, even BitChute, if I remember right, had pressure applied to them from payment processors. Gab has pressure applied to them from the people that they're renting servers from. Even Patreon, the one everybody thinks is lib shit central, half the decisions they make are forced on them by financial institutions that for whatever reason have decided they get to tell you what you can and can't say on the internet. Fucking MasterCard and Visa and these banks. <laughs> Why the fuck do they have any say in any of that? You should be apolitical and amoral. You exist to exchange currency, to transfer it into and out of accounts. Nobody cares what your fucking politics are. Shut your fucking mouth and change my money, moneylender. What are you what are you doing? Oh, Jesus Christ. I feel like I'm living in I just don't even know anymore. I don't know. It feels like the world's lost its fucking mind. I just want my internet back. Or at least to enjoy as much of it as I can before it completely goes tits up. Uh, I'm sorry, Chad. I know this is uh, this is ranty, isn't it? I'm ranting a lot, but... Uh, what are you going to tell? Right, let, me, let me try to get... A lot of you gave super chats and... So this, is, this is probably the last time I'm ever going to get them. I'm going to read every fucking one of them. Uh-oh. An error has occurred. That's good. <laughs> They're already gunning for me. Okay. All right. See how it is. <laughs> no no super shekels for you. <laughs> you sit your ass down, Irishman. All right. I see how it is. Uh, You, you know, advice going forward, I would say this. If you have a... I hate saying this fucking word, content creator that you like, somebody whose videos you find entertaining or whose live streams you like, make sure that you're following them on whatever alternate accounts they may have. Because chances are you could wake up tomorrow and the guy that makes the funny fucking videos you like doesn't exist anymore. They're just gone. And unless you know what their, I don't know, fucking Twitter account, their Instagram or Facebook or whatever dumb shit they use is, you'll never find them again. You know, I, I guess D Live is a is a choice you could use. I don't know how long that's going to last. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but it's something that exists at least momentarily for you to use. That just sucks. Just sucks. Don't you love cheerful streams like this? I know you want the the hopeful takes that are going to tell you everything's going to be all right. It's not going to be all right. <laughs> Shit's fucked, and everything is on fire, and it's just going to escalate more and more until the fucking election. It's going to get worse. Much, much fucking worse. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's read some super chats. Let's see what offensive shit people have said. Let's have some fun with it. Autism forums. I'm sure by saying that username, I've probably been put on a blacklist now. Stop reading super chats. Neeger. Uh-oh. Somebody alert the authorities. <laughs> 1776 Ma. Rise and shine, and welcome to school today. And on are you from 
Trump Nation. Seriously, if you haven't checked out Bitwave.tv, please do before it's too late. YouTube is beginning to open the seventh seal. From Necro13, just apologize to Google and it's fine. LOL. Yeah, kiss corporate ass. That's going to save the day. <laughs> that always works out. Suck that dick. Suck that dick. You tickle those balls. Make Papa Google feel good and swallow it. Maybe they'll let you stick around for a day longer. From Gay Tetsuyo. Evening, Jim. Have you seen the new Godzilla movie? Nope. No, I haven't. Rude dude. But Jim, Sergen said we should be Google's friend. Yeah, that's worked out well for everyone. Trump Nation, this Pride Month, don't become a statistic. Join Bitwave.tv as a, a prophylactic against censorship. Veggie bad, people always screech about how shop owners should make gay wedding cakes, even if it offends their religious sensibilities. Yet they say they're a private company. They can do what they want when people are banned on YouTube. Hey, just, <laughs> hey, veggie bad, just make your own internet, make your own servers, make your own website and social media, make your own payment processor, and make your own banks, okay? It's not that hard. You just need to create the infrastructure of a small country. All right, stop crying about it. And just, just build a nation. <laughs> that's, it. that's their fucking retort, isn't it? From Tetsuyo again. Hey, Jim. Compile the Ross playlist. Check it out. I will. The amazing, or amazing Atheist. Oh, yeah. Amazing Atheist. <laughs> Banana Man got hit, too. He had a, a couple of videos removed. He had videos removed making fun of people that he... They had a, some podcast. The drunk... Or I should say Drunken Peasants. Okay. I uh, had a podcast talking about Sandy Hook. And they had uh, their podcast removed just from having it in the title. I don't even think they I don't even think they listened to the video to see what they said. They just removed it. But from the Amaz or Amazing Atheist, it's the end of days, Jim. I see you're about to feel the wrath of October rains. I'll keep you in my prayers tonight. Thank you, buddy. From FJ Chathulu. Jim, tell my bro Adrian. He's a potato nipper. Adrian, you are a potato nipper. From Skeleton. It's not just socio-political channels getting hit, Jimbo. Adoration of the Cross has permission of the artist to upload their Gregorian Byzantine chants. YouTube demonetized his whole channel, even though there were no claims. Yeah, I've seen a couple of people claim that as well. Uh, certain channels are getting demonetized for no reason or ridiculous reasons. It'd be interesting to see who he watched and what comments he left to see if that had some impact on him being hit. From Hands Handsome, of course you start when I have work, cause it's all about me, you prick. This is OG Say More Homie. $5 say you mispronounced my name again. Uh, more than likely true. From Shark Mank, or Shark Man 9K, Carlos is a churlish twink that needs to get sawed right off. Shout out to MMC Lo... I can't say that, dude. I don't know how to say French. From Super Deagle, hey Jim, as a hard R gamer. Does YouTube's new supremacy over policy or group policies affect my ability to monetize pony, or poning the noobs on my YouTube channel? Um, technically, yes. It could be seen as bullying and harassment. You've you've designated noobs as a group, and you're poning them. So yes, technically that would affect you. Medicare's Lunicorn Archives. What's your opinion on Apple issuing copyright takedowns mocking Apple's $999 stand for their $4,999 monitor? I'm surprised they had lawyers to file copyright takedowns uh, <laughs> when they probably spent all their money on that amazing futuristic design for their Mac Pro unit, which looks like a cheese grater. I, what industrial hellscape did that fucking thing crawl out of? And who charges $1,000 for a metal stick to hook to your monitor? God, they've gone off the deep end. From the Helian Juggalo, Happy Straight Pride Month, where we make babies, not slogans. Trump Nation, SBCC is alive, that's all I can say. Meth's back. Uh, they think we bluff, but we don't bluff. Wheeze, huh? From Jormiel, quick gym stream while you can. Earn that money. <laughs> you better believe it. From Krasimir Dragonhop, everything is gone. Entire playlist of music lost. Trump Nation, the Goys actually made their own site, bitwave.tv. New Guardian, late gay Irish indie platform. From Duplis1919, Jim, what are your thoughts on some furry conventions doing HIV screenings? Are the rumors true that HIV AIDS are rampant at furry conventions? Uh, yes. 
<laughs> I would imagine a lot of them are probably paused. Uh, and I would I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing <laughs> if they're doing AIDS tests at the fucking door for all these disgusting sweaty people in fursuits that are having just disgusting nasty sex. Oh, can you imagine the smell of those things? Some obese man sweating in a fursuit, just stained with shit and cum. <laughs> it must be like death. Possible double. Hey Jim, what's your face when you realize Sargon is the DSP of politics? Uh, impossible. If Sargon was the DSP of politics, <laughs> he, he probably would have won. It's back. Jim is my kind of waifu. Hashtag Rama Rama F for Varg. Pharaoh Owen, press A to accelerate. Obviously, AIT. Straight Pride Worldwide, Straight Parades 2019. From Punished Huey, can we get a brap from the chat to celebrate Sargon's political career? I don't know, chat, do you want to give him a brap? Apparently, Sargon's political career didn't go as expected. <laughs> Who saw that coming? From uh, Citation Found. Mr. Minecraft is my favorite YouTube groomer. From Graf Von Trill. Carlos Maza is an obnoxious, thin-skinned <laughs> thin fig. Also, with a few exceptions, the profession of journalism is something which is worth, uh, uh, worthy of visceral disdain. Rather than any sort of praise, change my mind. From Zemeckis Lebowski, Sup Jim. Slippery Slope, what Slippery Slope? Uh, T YouTube from Ziggler guy. Fuck yeah, twenty six k down the drain. Send the super chat now before the stream gets demonetized. Smart thinking. From Cajun Kuyan, take this money. Oh, I will. From Lithuania Serb, the glow in the darks have struck us down. Stephen Stromboli, mom's gonna freak. Spriggan of Kokistan, my name is Carl Benjamin. I'm forming a new political party called Restoring Anglo Pride Everywhere, or Rape for short. Please join my rape party, and together we will fuck the feminists. From Cursed Dragon, was Dale Dribble modeled after you? Oh, you, you got it. In the, you, yes, absolutely, 100%. Half-boiled hero, have a free YouTube super chat. From Manchester Police, press F for Zurias' channel. Music is racist. Go yeah, that's another guy that got hit. Fucking music channel. <laughs> it's fucking gone. From Richard Gruber. Druze, Muslims, and Negroes aren't actual people, but a very impressive facsimile. From Psychomate, when will people learn to never apologize to SJWs? From Dustin D. Hayes, kind of weird timing though, isn't it? U.S. investigation of big tech companies now all of a sudden scorched earth. Class action lawsuit possible? I don't know. I just, let me say this, be wary. I know this shit is infuriating and a lot of people are affected by it. And you're going to see a lot of people come out with a lot of ideas on how to handle it. But you're going to see a lot of people really trying to grift. All right. They're going to come out and they're going to say, I've got to go fund me or I've got a Kickstarter and a really neat idea of how to deal with this. And they're going to ask you for a quarter of a million dollars and they're not going to deliver shit. So, you know, when, when you're talking like class action lawsuits and how are people going to react, just be wary of anybody in the next week or two that comes out and says, Donate to this GoFundMe and we're going to own the libs. Because they just want to pocket the money. From Austin M. Walmart wage slave reporting in. Chief Bangs agent. From Eduardo Ramirez. Maranos Arriba. Pare mi detractores mayades. Cow. I probably butchered the shit out of that. Review tier DSP says. Pay my taxes, dude. <laughs> I'm aware DSP having a bit of a tough time right now. From EB081997. Can you call my roommate M Mika a nigget faggot? If you want me to call him that, sure. Mika, you are a nigget faggot. Uh, that's what EB is telling me. From Spunky Platypus, I just miss my kids. Please, Helen. Hook nose, shekels for you, Daddy Jim. Welcome to the South. From KTTK, the gunt wants to consume you. Be careful. Jason versus Jason 2017. About time you streamed, asshole. We're bored. Uh, well, I am going <laughs> to... Probably he's not going to be on here. Because uh, everybody's getting fucked with. Uh, but I, I will be streaming E3. I plan on covering the majority of it. I'm not going to do EA. I know EA is doing their, their own thing, but they've spread it out over a day. And I don't want to watch an hour of live stream about Madden. And then an hour about FIFA. And then an hour about NBA. Like, fuck that. So I'm going to focus on uh, Microsoft Bethesda. Uh, let's see, uh, Ubisoft, uh, probably Devolver Digital, I'll do the PC gaming show. And then, 
maybe AMD. I think they have their own little their own little show, and then uh, cap it off with Nintendo. That's my plan. I like E3. It's always a disappointment. There's always cringy, ridiculous shit that goes on, but I like it. Uh, and even though Sony's not participating, whatever. I, I plan on doing that. Uh, Technician123, it's happening. He tried to warn us. We didn't listen. From Lithuia Serb, uh, Terry Davis didn't die for this. From Eduardo Ramirez, hey Jim, what's your favorite hentai you degenerate? <laughs> Who would ever answer that question publicly? Certainly not me. From Bob Jones, Samuel Woodward did nothing wrong. As for Eskun, did he know that TV Tropes has a page on you? Top keck. From Jason Weaver, love you, Jim, no homo. Cody Rush, Jim, I'm watching my employees pour asphalt and pave a parking lot while spending the profits on superberries. Good life, man. Best YouTuber ever. Oh, well, thank you. And buy, and buy your poor employees a beer or something. It's probably, it's probably, uh, pouring asphalt is a, can be a shitty job. From Nick Spence, Crowder is a fag. From Zach Funk, Gay Fragility, Obi-Wan Kenobi, hello there. Papa Jim, may the force be with you. Grenade, or grenade Spider, just in case this is the last time we are able to send you a super chat, here's some shekels, much appreciated. From Linus L, only true sweetie squatties can't try force. From Graf, or, <laughs> Graf Von Trill, I remember when Neil uh, Sekarega, I'm butchering that, made his first internet videos. I miss those simpler times. From Akutu, Jim, will you ever will we ever watch Photon again? Uh, let me say, David Stay has his own show he's doing. Uh, it's David Stay's State of Mind. I don't know how that's going to go. He had a bunch of fucking audio issues. Uh, but he does have a YouTube channel. Uh, he is doing live streams. If you like Photon, if you like David Stay, all that shit is going to be up and available. I don't know what his schedule is. I don't know how many times he's going to stream per week. But there you go. I, I'll, I'll try to link it later on for people. From Girk Garb, Microsoft announced Xbox hygiene for smelly gamers. Yeah, if I wanted to smell like a gamer, if I wanted to smell like a gamer, I'd stop showering for a week. I, I don't need hygiene products to smell like them. I could just stop stop being hygienic to accomplish that. From Crusader of God, Free Sab. Darthism, Epic Boomer Hours, Who Up? From Waxigan, name a uh, name of anime about Planet of the Jews. You would be talking about Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Dante the Lifting, Dante the Lifting Capitalist. Daddy, YouTube, no. Guys just lift guys, no soy boy. From Bagheria, Q. I will go into a risky surgery next week. Last surgery I almost GG'd out of. Can I have a Make-A-Wish style private one-on-one -on -one chat with you? I know it's a lot to ask. If not, maybe a haiku for my well-being. You want to make a wish one on one chat with me? <laughs> I don't know if you're fucking with me. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give you that one on one private chat if you live stream your surgery. If you live stream that bad boy, you got it. <laughs> I want you to live stream it with super chat on. TT oh, TTS your surgery so we can shit talk your surgeon. That way you can pay for the recovery. It's a brilliant idea. I'm going to trademark and copyright that. From SJW Central, Crowder took a knee and removed the fig t-shirt. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, YouTube actually posted a follow-up and said they would restore Crowder's monetization if he removed his t-shirt. <laughs> so I guess, according to SJW Central, he did. From Pimpineer, hey Jim, what's your favorite console? Oh, shit. Uh, of all time, probably PS1 or PS2. I just like the libraries they have. Uh, you know, a close second would be tied, I guess... The first place tie between PS1 and PS2. Second place between NES and SNES. Third place would probably be uh, Dreamcast. From Phoenix. Hey, Jim, big fan. Can you please tell my friend Chris to stop vomiting on public transport? <laughs> I don't know if he's going to listen to me if he's so drunk at this point that he's doing that. From Vincent Howell. I hope your days are going good and you have a great prosperity. With love, Vincent. The Red Elephant. Vincent James. We are facing the end of the internet. Uh, yes, we are. Welcome to the Alamo. Raccoon friend Trump is coming for for suppressors next after Virginia Beach. It's almost like he doesn't want to be reelected. Jim or Kim Jong Un still doing the 2020 candidates video, Jim. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. No, I've been I, again. I'm not. You know, a lot of the <laughs> there's this one Democratic candidate who put up a, a promotional video for his run where he talks about playing with dollhouses in his mother's garage. How the fuck can I not talk about that? He is the Jeb Bush of their side. 
Uh, Gigi Allen, time to short YouTube stock. Easy money, friends. From Graf Von Trill, first D&D Betray Game of Th uh, Thrones fans with a train wreck of a final ending. Now YouTube betrayed the smaller creators by bowing to a man who endorses political violence. From Overseer USA, shout out to Kitty0706. He made my childhood enjoyable with his content. And he'd hate to have, uh, he'd hate what YouTube has become. If you're still with us, cancer sucks. And so does internet censorship. From Quantum, Frank or Quantum Frankie Theory, press S to spit on Silicon Valley. You know what, chat? You want to press S to spit on Silicon Valley while I get a drink? And put on a, a selection of wonderful music for us. Not even sure what the fuck we'd listen to. We find something stupid <laughs> that I can put on. It's just a little bit of background noise. Uh, let's see. What would you fucking hate? What what song could I put up that would instantly piss all of you off? Uh, it's so rare that my music choices please anyone. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yo, I know. I know. I've got a good one. It's a very short one. <laughs> this this one will do. All right. Uh, take a quick break. I'll come back. I'll read the rest of our super chats here. Uh, give it a few minutes. But uh, let me let me put this on as some background music while I grab myself a drink. Go use the bathroom if you need to. Uh, let's say two minutes, three minutes. I'll be right back. People asking what song was that? Well, that was a new. That was that was from Garth Brooks' return album, called "Fuck Country, Thug Living." I don't know why I called it Thug Living rather than Thug Life, but that's how Garth Brooks <laughs> rolls. I don't know how he got that voice to happen either, but our boy's hardcore. All right, he's street now. You need to understand it. All right, you need to respect that shit. So let's get back. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to start picking the worst songs I can for our little transition breaks like that. Really introduce you to a whole new world of music. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, where did I leave off here? From Cody Lau, Hose Mad. Quantum Frankie Theory Press that. Oh, we already did that one. From Rousen, Sargon and Gamergate 2 inspired me. Let's try to make hashtag Pully the Polar Bear 2 in which we try to get Donald Trump to tweet the N-word. Libs triggered. Libs owned. From Saber Aaron. Carlos is pissed that Crowder can get remonetized if he removes the links to his shirts. Carlos is calling for everything short of death. This is bullshit. Side topic. Were you a Digimon fan as a kid? Uh, Digimon Digital Monsters. Digimon are the champions. Never heard of it. <laughs> Never heard of it. From Maggie Ellis. 
You consistently make me feel simult or simultaneously better and worse about life. And that makes you special. Smoking a camel light in your honor, maybe the fucking burning world will light it for me. Cheers, love. Scam likely, just m m make your own content or make your own internet. From Waxican, finished Steins Gate, highly recommended. Found out John Titer was a real thing. I was a baby then. Your initial opinion of John Titer when it was a big thing. Um, you talking about the dude that went around telling everybody he had a time machine? <laughs> uh, yeah, I. It was fun. It was fun to pay attention to for a while. From Mikey C. <laughs> How long uh, before the Constitution is changed to, to or due to hurt feelings? I don't know about the Constitution, but the internet sure is going that way. From Adam Blythe. Yet two years ago, you derided Sargon for trying to organize against this. You were more than a little late to the party. <laughs> Sargon wasn't organizing against shit. What the fuck are you talking about? Sargon's plan that I derided him for was he wanted to be best friends with Google. I want you to understand this is his br you know, brilliant brainchild idea. He said the best way to get remonetized is to tell everybody what great guys Google are. <laughs> like, they give a shit. Do you think a, a multi-billion dollar international corporation like Alphabet gives two fucks if you think that they're uh, your friends? They're going to make their corporate decisions and, uh, you know, their bottom line decisions based on their own analytics and their own internal documents and employees. They don't give a shit what you think as a personal fucking user of their platform. <laughs> we just need to be their friend. Oh. From Mr. Clinton, Nassim Sabas didn't die for this. Pinky culture, the free market at work. The crack den. What's more likely? A, that YouTube hides my content from my subs. B, that I make bad content. Am I being censored, or do I need to get good? A little, co or a little of common A, or a little of column A, a little of column B, more than likely. Linus L, how do we have any fun in an unfunny world, Jim? We're all gonna have to go to you. We're gonna, at this point, we're all gonna be stuck using forums again. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> really shitty forums, and we're gonna have to like resurrect Angel Fire in GeoCities. From Mr. Ned, I'd say the only way to fix this is to make the internet a public utility like the public square. Make it illegal to deplatform someone. From Trues, I've known this for a while. You either code your words where a select few friends know what you're talking about, or keep it all in your head. From Nordic Nationalist, gamers unironically un rise up. From Radio Ruin, you fight back with guns, Jim. From Russ Daddy, fuck Silicon Valley. Dr. Sandsvich, I'll live with it as long as Vox goes out of business. From Tiberian Fiend, but Jim, these are all voluntary transactions. Lulbert. <laughs> just just make your own payment processor. From Josh Sketch Show, I really miss the old YouTube with a super customizable cha or channel layout. Having friends besides subscribers and a functioning inbox. Made lots of friends on the site back in 2008. Do you have a favorite era of YouTube, Jim? I miss when you could use... Uh, you know, back in the day, you could post video responses to people's videos, and it would be put underneath their video. So, it was f it was just it was very entertaining to fuck with people, to have them put something stupid up, <laughs> and then your smart ass reply is directly under their video, so everybody that watches it sees that you're making fun of them. Uh, that was fun. Boy, did that get taken down quick. From Roadkill Phil, what's the point of these streams, Jimbo? We get it. We're screwed. Oh, the point of this one, Roadkill Phil, is me enjoying the last moments of my sweet, sweet superberries before my channel gets, before it gets fucking banhammered. Uh, your mom, Jim, if you were in any form of power, what would you do about this BS? Oh, I don't know. If I was any form of, if I had any form of power, I'd probably be abusing it, snorting coke off hookers' asses and driving my, uh, my fucking Lambo down the wrong way of the road and 180 miles an hour because isn't that what people in power do abuse it thoroughly for their own gain from jtoki12 can i get an f for censorship and our loss of privacy from make us equinox are the europeans ruining things again <laughs> when are they not a uh, radio ruin imagine if our girl nasir aden had brenton terrence resources and technical ability just something to consider from trump nation the phone lines are still the Wild West. Jim, retards rise up. Bitwave.tv. From Wow Begazzled. Hopefully, Candida Oris kills humanity soon. Athena, goddess of wisdom and warfare. 
A lot of people would rather practice denialism than admit this stuff is happening. It makes me sick to my stomach that this is happening. From Digital, the solution is violence. From Radio Ruin, Nassim Ogden? I don't know how to pronounce it. From Hate Speaker, <laughs> Hate Speaker Sargon of Akkad, I love the BBC. Ninja Work 111, can it tilt the other way? Can we ever go back? Uh, probably. Well, I, I, I don't think we're going to get the internet like we had it before, but I think the people in charge... I, I, I don't know. I get the feeling Zoomers, that's what you want to call them, and the generation after them, probably won't like all the censorship, and they probably won't like all the limp-wristed hug box shit. Uh, so I'd imagine that they'll get t- uh, sick of it, but I don't think it's ever going to go back to the way it was before this. It might get somewhat better, but not not like it was. Woodstock TC, YouTube siding with Crowder first and then changing it, uh, changing to flagging, etc. are because of the incoming antitrust, I guess. Yes, stay safe, stay anonymous. Cheers from Germany. From Luco Forenza. I'll catch the mirror later, but take some shekels. Cheers from Brazil, Daddy. Cloud Man, who's the bigger douchebag? Vox Guy or Thanos? I don't know. Thanos had a charming personality. I'm going to have to go with Vox. From Sarah H., social media is going to be TV 2.0. It's going to be old, dry programming no one gives a shit about. People will get bored, leave, and these platforms will die. Godspeed, chat. We always have smoke signals. From fuck you, Google, it's also tiresome. Rocket and Sano, get on Crowder. <laughs> I've never talked to Steven Crowder before. I don't think that's happening. From Indigo Jack, 2019, Sargon crashes UKIP. 2020, Sargon's wife files for divorce. 2021, Sargon's banned from YouTube, his only source of income. 2025, a homeless Sargon is institutionalized, calls himself Prime Minister Carl Benjamin. From Damon Darwin, Brap. The Mind Corporation, if we yell at the government enough, we get the regulations passed to force these companies into free speech. Again, it's how are you going to get enough people to yell at the government? If, if they keep taking away every platform you can yell about it, you're not going to get anybody behind you to yell about it. It's, that's what I, it's like this, it just snowballs. It's a snowballing effect. The longer it goes on, the worse it gets. From Oyve Re, Kurt Reichenwald, Oy vey, Jim, your views are problematic. Goyams rise up. Quick Bob Hero, Google's being investigated, hence a behavioral shift. From Alexier, straight pride worldwide. From iPig, it's time to wrap things up, get real jobs, maybe start a family, become normies again. Mike's content, that human Carlos Maza needs to be taken out to a nice milkshake. It's time to take it where he thinks he wants to go, enough. Video game snake, Carlos Maza's homosexual Reddit is hilarious. Some guy, time to buy a GoPro gym. From Comwest907, you need to starve the beast, ad blocks. No YouTube-based super chats, but hey, I got a YouTube dollar to talk to you. NinjaWork111, don't you know animal rapper are a protected people gym? Or animal rapers, sorry, my bad. From Dami Pesos, just testing to see if I can say queer in super chats. Queer, queer, little queer, please put it in my rear, I love queers and homosexuals. I believe that worked, Dame. You know what, let me read that again just to just to double check it for you. Uh, just testing to see if I can say queer in Super Chats. Queer, queer, little queer, please put it in my rear. I love queers and homosexuals. That looks like it worked. From Dean DeSoto, the end game of online censorship is to make fun of fur, to make furries and zoo files a protected class. A Stormer 454, oh, DeFranco just published his video about this. From Christina A., zoophiles and pedophiles are actively trying to inch their way into the LGBT crowd, and they have even made their own fucking flags. Why live? From Jose Pavon, name of those intro songs. Uh, The first one is Rama Rama, which is a PSA about not drinking gasoline. And the second is called Blue's Clues Remix. Should be the first result. Hurry up and wait. Holy hell, I caught it just in time. From Snots, what are you looking forward to laughing at most during E3? Uh, let's see. I'm going to look forward to laughing at the fact Microsoft is probably going to... <laughs> it's probably going to show a bunch of third-party shit and then not show anything that I'm really interested in. You know, I love when they do the, uh, oh, we've got all these exclusives to drop, but then it's a timed exclusive, so it's not really exclusive at all. I know they said they had, what, um, 14 first-party Microsoft games? We'll see. I know Nintendo's got a, a list of stuff they're going to show off in their little direct. I, I, I don't know. I have hopes going in, uh, but I've learned enough over the years 
that the more you hope for a good E3, the worse it'll be. So I'm just going to keep myself, you know, just in check. I'm not going to get hopeful about anything, really. <laughs> I'm not going to look forward to anything. And then I can't be disappointed. From uh, Brig Yeet, no one got screwed harder than Mumkey Jones. From RM, the dude needs to actually die for this. From Quantum Frankie Theory, Carlos blocked Ricky Berwick for calling him out what a joke he is. Did he really? Oh, what a pussy. From the Zamfire, YouTube is pretty gay. V Sniper 64, Frick Fox. From Cayman Common, Jesus Christ, he's a textbook definition of soy. From AQB 52101, have my shekels, Jim. Glad to see this is getting called out. From Heal, I can't crack enough jokes about zoo files. They hide behind report buttons and cry wolf when anyone brings up valid arguments against dog sex. I'm sorry, against dog on human sex. From Donald's Angry. Only suspension I ever got on Twitter was when I posted, Gas the Furs. Fur figs are a protected class. From B. Tim. Do you think Crowder has a lawsuit against Maza for tortious interference with a business? Maybe this is how they stop this from happening. I don't know. I can't give you any legal opinions because I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> and anything I say is going to sound stupid as fuck. I could, I, here's, here's how I can answer this question. I could go Wikipedia tortious interference with a business and then try to sound like I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Or I could tell you to go ask Nick Ricada because he probably does know what he's talking about and he could give you a much better answer. From S. Cybertaz, take my money while you still can, you magnif <laughs> magnificent potato nigger. From Haphazard, Jim, Furry, Acab, all cops are bad drama on Twitter. Oh, you got to link that to me. I need to see that. From Keegan the Great, someone check those phone numbers. They're fake. Are they really? He posted fake phone numbers and said he got harassment from them? Oh, that's fantastic. From A. Rose, is live chat or is live chat working for anyone else? I don't know. Some I, I, I don't. Let me check here. I have it on live chat right now. It seems to be working for me. I'm not sure if... I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Stabby McStabwood, can we use his tactics against him and spam YouTube? From Scott D 86 nice to see they didn't take away your super chats yet. Will you continue to make videos if they take away your ability to make money? Well, yeah. <laughs> I made videos for like seven years before that. Yeah, I'll keep making videos. Uh, next one I have coming up is about Polly Amory. Uh, God, that's some depressing shit. I found this polyamorous forum with the world's most depressing people. Of uh, It's nothing but a fucking scarred battlefield of broken marriages and just utter depression. It's the saddest shit I've ever seen. Uh, so I'm making a video about that. That'll be up Friday. Uh, and then after the E3 streams, I've got a video about streamers. Uh, kind of start, It's starting with Ice Poseidon Orbiters. And just, uh, I don't want to give it too much, but that's another one that's coming up uh, in the next like two weeks. Uh, Alex Blackfoot, or Alex Blackfoot, YouTube wants money. Jesus Christ, how terrifying. From hurry up and wait, just spam Lispy Carlos with big gay crybaby. Video game snake, it's crazy how the San Francisco journalist is into cucking. I know, who saw that coming? From Ninja Work 111, God, I wish blue check marks could grow a fucking spine. D Close Man, want a sponsor from a non soy Cali tech company? DM me. Actually, don't do sponsorships. Uh, thank you for the offer, but I'm <laughs> I'm good. I, I've had people offer before to do like uh, advertising or sponsorships and stuff like that. I, I usually, I, I don't usually do it. And, it, you know, for the most part, I'm not super rude about it either. I mean, I had one was like, oh, you should come stream on our site. We'll pay you to do it. It was through some like mobile app or something like that. Not, not really interested. Uh, I think I'm extra hesitant after seeing what happened with, um, oh, what the fuck was it? What was the skeptic uh, clusterfuck that they got involved in? <laughs> I can't. Candid. There we go. Oh, signed a bunch of non-disclosure agreements and then started just doing just stupid shit. From Dietrich Garbo, don't belittle the progressive Che. The chosen one, I had to deal with a lot of Carlos Maza people during my high school years. It was brutal. Shake my head. From Dustin D. Hayes, YouTube... <laughs> Claims YouTube builds monsters. Meanwhile, he just deprived thousands of people of their ability to make or provide for their family. The irony. From S4S Coon. Hey, Jim. Have you seen this? Take it with a pinch of salt, but I'd like your take on it. Very irrelevant to this whole thing. Imager. Oh, and you've got a link. I'll take a look later. Uh, Zach Funk. Carlos, it's a joke, not a dick. Don't take it so hard. 
Caleb Lambright, forget Guy Fox mass, dress like Medicare, unite, retards rise up, Scotty McFloof. Can we just set the world on fire already? Hurry up and wait. I love how them being gay, or I love how them being gay to them is everything because they have no other personality traits or characteristics other than being gay. It's actually sad. Uh, yeah, they made that their whole whole identity. I mean, that's kind of the vibe I get from him. Uh, he always brings that up for whatever reason. It's a really weird thing to insert in a conversation. <laughs> Sitting there talking about the weather. Yeah, man, it's a sunny day out. By the way, I like to suck dicks. But yeah, real blue skies out today. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice weather. Well, thanks for sharing. Uh, Rocket and Sano. Big brother wasn't the threat. Little brother was a threat all along. If you do anything wrong, they run to tell mom even while they smack you in the back of the head. The greatest rogue traitor, he's totally gay and vindictive. Mike's content, the cyst of the butt of life, needs to be taken out of his misery. If he comes near my house, I will gladly help him. It's time to go now or never. From Leadmaster, Hey Jim, hope you're doing well. One solution is to create your own local network, Usenet's based on circles of trust. Not a permanent overall solution, but it will allow for freedom of information in the face of the collapsing internet. You know, I read an article on Ars Technica. I know, right? Ars Technica of all places. It must have been like four or five years ago, talking about lo or like local mesh networks and how people were setting up uh, essentially what you're talking about. Um, I don't know whatever happened with that. Maybe I'll look into that again. Ah, oh, man. Uh, they Incamus, $20 million to Vox from NBCU. There we go. Part of the GMO strategy there. From Dural Lead Sex Lex, LGBT people can't re or can't produce interesting content because they're not interesting people. They're obnoxious, weak need degenerates obsessed with the body part they put inside other body parts. From Right Right, a well deserved two dollars. From MF Chicken Flipper, if I may quote or if I may quote Mahler, massive faggot. Trump Nation Stream.me was sort of a quarantine, but it enabled some very entertaining content. Bitwave.tv is to is becoming the next stream me. Built to last this time. <laughs> Wait, Trump Nation, are you saying it's becoming the new quarantine? Alden the Blue, YouTube could have ignored this, but they chose to become this man-child's punk. Good job, YouTube. From Kid Napa, this just in, local journalist tries to deplatform a person whom he doesn't like. More at 11. From Rich, Crowder can't be stupid enough to think that even looking at a gay the wrong way won't get him banned. YouTube is just itching to ban conservatives. Big tech is infested with leftists. From DD Link 7, please get me out of this clown world. Uh, no, you're stuck forever. You're not going anywhere. From Sinak 8, man, the shrooms are hitting me hard. I see Scooby Doo freaking out in the corner saying, Riggers raping Raggy over and over. From Connor D. Butlier, looking forward to about a decade from now when I'm dragged off to the gulag, or gulag for giving you this fiver. Well, thank you for that fiver. From Graf Von Trill, I don't even remember Andrew Carnegie or the Vanderbilts being leftist busybodies. The modern day Robin Baron or Robin Robber Barons are just that bad. Yeah, they are worse, aren't they? Rich people, blue bloods used to just be obsessed with their own fucking wealth. <laughs> now they want to do social good by fucking everybody. Uh, George Clowney, well, gamers, there's only one thing we can do now. We need to get Trump to tweet about Gamergate and get Monday Matt on the Tucker Carlson show. Athena's goddess of wisdom and warfare. So as a disabled person, can I talk I can't talk about my own disability. No, you're not allowed to. <laughs> welcome to Welcome to fucking clown world. Big spiritual sploder. Keep on fighting the system, Jim. Don't be silent. From Coila Dante. I'm glad the cathartic expulsions <laughs> Cathartic expulsions of twelve or twelve oh nine happened. Those Cathars got what they deserved. I butchered that, I'm sure. Ninja Work 111, to be fair, X destroys Y was getting kind of old. From M.O., is this crazy dude you are following? Is the crazy dude you're following Owen Benjamin? No, no. Um, there's a, a YouTuber named Drummer828 who made a video 10 years ago about somebody. That video has been up on his, his YouTube channel for a decade. And out of the blue, he gets an email saying he's going to get sued. And when he talks about this guy threatening to sue him for a 10-year-old video, the guy says he's going to sue everybody that talked about the tweet and talked about the video. And then looking into him, it's like crazy fucking backstory. From Electric Boogaloo V2, Yes, Jim, move to DLive where you have to actively mod your chat and ban offensive comments. Bitwave.tv 
from a wild Deku, Carlos is a Carlos is quite a lispy fag. And by fig, I mean gay boy. As for s screenshot is missing a post. There's a link to a poll thread. From Bernie Powers, try streaming at africa.tv. Jade can translate the moon runes for you. From D-Dub, people used to let go of the tribalistic boomer idea of a free market. We need extreme regulation of these platforms. Stop allowing them to use that as a defense to silence dissent. From Lord Caber, looking forward to anything at E3 this year? Uh, lots of laughs. Uh, disappointment. Uh, cringy presentations of out-of-touch people that don't know their audience. The same old, same old, really. From Pirate Skeleton, Vox may live to regret this move since attacking straight white males. Can also get them flagged by the new policy. Happened to Facebook when feminists got suspended. The Mind Corporation, screw my previous super chat about petitioning the government. Chaos Law, have you heard of uh, Voosh and his views? Uh, nope, no I have not. Uh, from Bankori, good content Jimbo, here's hoping everything accelerates so we can get the day of the rope already. Keep your head up and bread up, Holmes. All right, I'm finally getting caught up. Um, and this is more of an impromptu stream, again. I know it's not the best organized. I wanted to rant a little bit and enjoy my last my last few super berries before I probably get the axe like everybody else. Uh, but, you know, I, I, depending on how things go, I, I, again, still plan on streaming for E3. That's what I'm looking forward to. I've got a video going up Friday about polyamory forums, uh, the, the most depressing places on Earth. Uh, and you can find updates depending on what may or may not happen with my channels on my good friend's Twitter account, Mr. Antibully. I should be able to keep you all up to date with all the fun shit that's going on. From Nerdbane, damn it, Jim, this all could have been prevented. If only you made a video on JF. I need to milk those titties. <laughs> Crooked Smirk, living in a bad ending timeline confirmed? I believe it is. From Dathos, will you ever be able to stream Photon again? Uh, you can follow David Stay. He's doing his own state, uh, <laughs> what does he call it? State of mind. Uh, good shit. From Larry Banks, did you know of the Monkey Jones controversy? Where he cheated on his girlfriend with a furry cub artist? <laughs> what? Did you, I'm sorry, hold on. Did you know of the Mon Monkey Jones controversy? Where he cheated on his girlfriend with a furry cub artist that did it with a 15-year-old? <laughs> Much of the info comes from Mr. Meat Man. <laughs> no, I didn't, but I know what I'm watching tonight. From Dio Strabo, Jeff Bammy for saying he was looped by Luke Ford. From Lithuia Serb, check out the Twitter account, She Bonson. From Nerdbane again, so whatever happened to your pals, Short Fat Otaku and Puppet Master, Dr. Randomer Cam? I don't fucking know what happened to either of them. I'm sure Dr. Randomer Cam is entertaining children with his, his puppet shows, and Short Fat Otaku is probably... Trying to convince women on Twitter that he's a mute, autistic, uh, disabled lesbian. <laughs> just like the good old days. From Maddox1000. Got the stream just in time. Can you call my friend Spencer a coward who plays Smash too much? Spencer, you are a coward who plays Smash very, very, way too much. From Padre Speaks. New video idea after Polly. Uh, Fat Life. I, I believe I've heard of that before. From uh, Lamo Content Gay. Uh, oh, yeah, Monkey Jones fricked a child-loving furry. <laughs> I'm gonna watch. I, I'll, yeah, I'll look into that. Sounds like it's an entertaining story. Servant of the Ancients for ridiculous hardcore songs. Uh, what is this? For ridiculous hardcore songs to anal cunt. Uh, during break, I suggest the band had to censor because Google. Seriously, read their songs out loud. Hilarious, ridiculous stuff. Air Juice YouTube search Sargon Milkshake song 2 minutes bitwave.tv. Me, Sniper 64 Hey, Jim, here's some cash for you because you rock. What is your opinion of atheism is unstoppable? Good or bad? <laughs> I think he, uh, didn't he back Tonka up uh, during the whole fight thing and then look like an ass when Tonka no-showed? <laughs> that's about, that's the last time I saw him. Talking about how uh, uh, Tonka was going to decimate people in the ring. And then Tonka never showed up because he sent in fake blood work and a fake name on a contract. Ooh, it's embarrassing. From Trump Nation. Hey, chat, come over to bitwave.tv after the stream and see if you can say near quigger. Uh, Gino Martinez, my last YouTube premium free chat before I stop paying. From James Beanick, kick fun me, I've been doxxed. Some gay Vox guy. From Charming, let's start another fucking crusade just cause. Vanish Huey, type yum if we need to stop the censorship by smelling and licking Susan Wojak's feet. 
That is what Sargon said, at least. <laughs> it's a fucking disturbing thought. Dr. Syndrome, have you heard about the cartel streaming? Uh, no, I've not. Guns down, inhale. Can we go into space and make side colonies and be the real Xeon? And smash them with Zekus. Jim, you super queer queen boy goy. From Budabot, Mr. Medicare, I don't feel so good, vanishes. Your local milkman. As a Gen Xer, I'm looking forward to when Generation Zyklon takes the reins. Millennials will be blown the fuck out in a glass of milk a day to keep the paws away. Video Game Snake, Jim, Carlos Maza's Reddit is at Gay Wonk. Check it out. From Le Honkler, in case you get yanked, Jim, I loved your content for years. It's kept me laughing and going through some rough times. This is the beginning of the end. It's been an honor laughing at Sargon and Furries with you. Uh, thank you very much. From CIAU, Jim, what's your opinion on Nick Fuentes? I, I went on Nick's show. Uh, I don't remember how long ago it was. We talked about uh, there's some Catholic story in the news at the time. Uh, just other shit, bullshitted for a while. I haven't really kept up with him. I'm not sure what he's been up to much lately. Uh, so I, I guess I don't really have much of an opinion to give. From Danny the Sage. Yo, Jim, did you ever talk to or watch TN Pan or Black Buster Critic like 10 years ago? They were my favorites back then. I don't know about TN Pan, but I remember Black Buster Critic. <laughs> he, used, he used to fuck with uh, uh, Sonic fans and furries and shit on DeviantArt. Uh, Mystical Tutor. Thank you, Jim. I'll enjoy the. Uh, I'll enjoy it until the end. From Lily Liver. Also, have you? Or also, you have a Switch, right? Which games have you played on it, and which ones do you like? Do you have an opinion on Splatoon 2 and Zelda Breath of the Wild? Uh, Breath of the Wild's pretty good. Splatoon 2 is Splatoon 1. <laughs> if you like the first one, you like the second one. And you know, uh, the Switch has some decent games. Uh, but who knows? Maybe at this E3, with their direct that they're doing at the very tail end of it, uh, they'll show off footage of Luigi's Mansion and give you a release date, uh, give you some Animal Crossing release dates, put the Metroid Trilogy uh, remaster and give you a release date, maybe some Pikmin releases. Everything's a fucking remaster report, but let's, you know, at least it's something. And they've got, oh, what do you have? Your Pokemon games coming out in November? So <laughs> at least there's some shit. The first half of this year was brutal. If you were a Switch owner... The first six months of this year sucked ass. So at least you got the last six to look forward to. At least one or two big titles every month. From Meximan and Cheese. Advice for a new YouTuber. Astro Glider KY. Uh, you're going to have to take that barebacking raw. I'm sorry, there's no lube for you. From Nettie Johnson. Monograph Humped a Melon. From Dempolis. Well, it's fun to talk about these issues. Make sure to discipline yourself. Get fit and get knowledgeable. Also watch Europa The Last Battle Part 3. From Hyperion9997. Greetings from Canada. Uh, we got one from Kate Adams. From Zillion's Archive. Are you familiar with Mahler and e or, and or ER? If so, thoughts. I've watched a lot of ER stuff, actually. Um, I liked it. I've, I've watched his videos and talked about him before. That whole The whole thing with, um, you know, when PewDiePie mentioned his shit and then it started this fucking shitstorm. <laughs> that was another wave of this. I mean, that kind of ties into what we've talked about. Uh, PewDiePie got fucked with relentlessly. And then anybody that he talked about got fucked with relentlessly. It's it's crazy. I, I don't know. I think a lot of these journalists and news outlets like to go along with it because they're resentful of the audience that YouTubers can get. I'm not talking about myself here. I'm talking about people with, like, crazy amounts of subs that get, you know, like millions of views on a video. I'm sure that pisses a journalist off. I'm sure they... You know, probably a bit resentful of somebody like PewDiePie getting like 5 million videos or 5 million views on a video to talk about some news article where they wrote an article about it and they got like 10 views. Uh, from Squillum J Fancy Boy, also YouTube is starting its censorship. If I type 1488, it removes it instantly. Same with the N word. I remember you could type that before. From Henry Lansing, first they came for the people on the fringes of the internet, now they have come for conservatives. When they come for you, no one will be left to dissent. Big tech must be broken up. Hashtag trust bust now. From MF Chicken Flipper. I remember the days when I was 11 years old watching edgy stuff on YouTube. The days of the great original content is dead thanks to corporations and whiny F-words. I'll miss you and the others. From Parsilius Von Hohenheim. Thank you, Jim. You helped me learn to laugh at degeneracy. It's a shame even that it's not allowed on YouTube anymore. Here's some shekels for your undiagnosed lung cancer. Well, my lungs, thank you. From Brian Tomzik, 
Hey, Jim, thanks for the great content. What are some of your favorite musical artists? <laughs> Taylor Swift and Garth Brooks. From Zeno, uh, Zeno, <laughs> Zemo Pine. Jim, longtime fan, keep putting up the good fight since most people don't have the stones to do what you do. Speed bread. Just got back from Godzilla and the world there was better off than this. We're living in the end times. Hope you make the most of it. Good luck, Jimbo. P.S. Tell my boy Connor he's a fat, <laughs> he's a faggot. Uh, well, Connor, uh, Speedbread wants me to tell you that you are a faggot. Uh, harsh words indeed. From Admark, been watching you since uh, before the Gamergate and love your content ever since. I will follow you to the ends of Earth to make fun of Spurgs being a bi cross dresser. <laughs> being a bi cross dresser, the lispy queer needs to learn how to take it up his ass. From Stephen Duller, Crowder just had to remove the link. His retailers, however, stopped making the shirt. Oh, well, there you go with the update on that. I think we were caught up. Let me see here. Daniel Smith, glad I tuned in for the neck rope stream. We all knew, Jim. The internet will be decentralized again. Current internet is the cable of the future. From Rick Robinson, we get David's state of mind right before his content is probably going to get him shut down. Worst timeline. Thanks for the good times, Jim. Well, you know, hopefully David uh, is able, if, he, if he's not able to do it on YouTube, hopefully he can move it over to DLive or Twitch or Bitwave, or whatever. Hopefully he finds a, a fucking platform, because that guy's entertaining as fuck, and I, wanna, I want him to have his podcast. From Saber Aaron, with how insane things are getting, I wouldn't be surprised if someone doesn't take a shot at Trump if he wins again. It's going to get super crazy in the next election. Or if there's a huge internet crash. Hawk. All right, let me just refresh. I think I've gotten to uh, the majority. If I missed anybody, I, I, I'm sorry. I try to hit everybody, uh, but I occasionally do miss some. Uh, we've got a few more here. Uh, Black Cube Mystery, can I get an F for Pastor David Lynn for getting arrested for daring to preach the gospel to degenerates in Canada <laughs> during a pride parade? From Xander Z. Rant Z. Uh, seen AVGN Demolition Man video, T-shirt of you in it. I guess I, I did notice there was a T-shirt of me. From the Party. thanks for the videos, Jim. It's been an honor. From Juvenile Machine, hey there, Jim. Can you briefly talk about the Final Fantasy VII house? I know it's old news, but I always wanted to have you talk about it. Uh, cheers. I would recommend going and watching uh, Frederick Knutson. I always uh, down the rabbit hole has a a good video on that. If you want a, if you want a good video on the Final Fantasy house, I would recommend that. From Killshot Kenny, damn it, Jim. You would stream while I'm at work Monday. And Matt has a video accusing Vox of trying to start an apocalypse back from last Christmas. Of all people, what are the odds he was on to something? <laughs> well, broken clock, right? Uh, unplug the sky. Here's some shekels. Big Danny Jim. Or Big Daddy Jim. First time, whatever happened to Snake Thing and Kiro? Potato Nicers, Zoomer Groomer, Bing Bing Wahoo. I'm not sure what Kiro is up to right now. Last I uh, paid attention, there was police involvement and uh, a lot of shit coming his way from, from Twitter. I, you know, I'll take a look into it. Maybe do like a, a furry update stream. If I still exist at the time? From internet tab, adnauseum.io. Fight back against Google. Get the add-on for your browser to block and fake click ads, making Google repay the advertisers. From charming, rip Animal Crossing. The furries are coming. One, if by ban. Two, if by memes. Gamers, it might be time to quit without saving. Servants of the agents. Or servant of the agents. Hopefully you understand my super past, or my super, ch my past super chat about anal cunt. The order of the words got mixed up for some reason. My bad. From Dio Vendice. Hey, Jim, will you do a face reveal if I send dick pics? I promise it's worth it. <laughs> no. From Farron, quit smoking, faggot. Uh, Punished Huey, late super chat. Gonna uh, put remaining money into stocks, so in about 10 years I may cause some sort of change in this clown world. Good luck, Jimbo. From Bagel Goose, I added you the Mr. Meat Man video on Twitter. Well, thank you all. I'll be sure to watch that. Black uh, Cube Mystery, hey Pops, did you hear about the pastor that got beaten by and arrested by degenerates in Can Canadian land because he preached during a pride parade? No, I didn't, but I'll take a look. Onyx voice acting. So now we can't make fun of transgender brony people obsessed with Ghost Boon. Uh, no, we cannot. Uh, Joey Jojo Joe, Joe, ever play Xenoblade 2? If so, who's your favorite blade? Uh, no, I don't believe I have. VS uh, V Sniper 64, hashtag pay Jim. Larry Banks, also on Twitter, Mumpkey Jones responded to the video saying that most of it's true, only that he didn't use depression for his actions. No, and that's it. 
from Medicare's Lunicorn Archives. All Photon episodes have been up on YouTube for quite a while. As well as archives of your Photon streams, I'm sure it's safe to stream Photon on YouTube. After all, you don't save your streams. Gunther Slagthor, whatever happened to the Taki documentary that CRP and Ralph were going to do? Have you heard anything about it? Uh, no, I have not, but now that you bring it up CRP, I think he was demonetized today, too. Daily Freaks, hopefully not my last super chat. Let the darkness grow. From Danny Jim, are you excited for Mountain Blade Bannerlord? <laughs> I, I guess I'm indifferent. From uh, huh? Elgana Karnspur, thanks for the lulls. Jimbo, did you catch, uh, don't get to catch you live much. Can you call my bosses, Jason and Robert, you know, what for stalking me? Screw this censorship. Uh, Jason and Robert, you're a bunch of you-know-whats. All right? You know what it is. You know, buddy. From Dylan Fair, will you ever open up the Skype again? You know, I did call-ins on a few streams back in the day, but <laughs> it's always a disaster. Uh, Bigger John, the Internet's going to hell, and Adpocalypse too. I feel like the Quarry King has yet to be key to all of this. No step on Snake. Nothing will happen. Nobody will do anything. Censorship will continue. I am become Black Pill. From the grill, bro, you should check your health. We can hear every inhale of yours. I am sick as shit at the moment. Fox Wolf Bear. First man fought on land, then on sea, followed by the sky. Now man fights a new digital plane called the internet. However, man made this digital plane. And he can make another, shall we? From Canis Coma. The future is soy punk, worst timeline. From Pepka. Do you like PVV or PFFR shows? XRA, wonder shows, and... Waiting for everything edgy and humorous that I love to be nuked. Everything is going to get shit on. <laughs> Nobody's going to be able to enjoy anything. All right. I think I am caught up. Uh, let me see here. Again, if I missed your super chat, I'm sorry. I, I try to get them all. I occasionally miss some. Uh, let's see. I, I got a few more. I'll, I'll read ten more here, and then I'm going to close up. And uh, I, I don't know. Toast some marshmallows over the fucking trash fire that's the current state of the internet. <laughs> Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go watch content creators that I like because chances are they're not going to be there tomorrow. Not if Carlos Manza <laughs> has anything to do with it. All right. White Rice, thanks for making my morning. Keep up the good work, my potato Nigerian. From Jackass, thank you, Jim, for all the laughs throughout the years. Well, you're welcome. All I wanted was a Pepsi. Going to miss you if your channel gets show a Jim. Captain Yami, cheers, Jim. It's been a laugh. From Mike's content, Dispatch is a bigger homosexual than Carlos. He just creamed his panties because you said Bitwave. Gay. Hocus Pocus. Bye, Daddy. Thanks for everything. Captain Dubs, rage into the dying of the light. Your heart of darkness. Thank you for all the great uh, great content over the years, Jimbo. From Arginator5000, what a time to be alive. The internet has come to life. May the last, or may the trash... Aurora Borealis, burn on. I can't stop laughing. From Dirty Sanchez, okay, that's the fourth time an error occurred. Is YouTube blocking this? Jesus Christ, these figs. From Exiled Postman, did you hear the band Iron Maiden is suing 3D Realms for making a game called Iron Maiden? Uh, yeah, I did hear about that. Iron Maiden is actually really fun. I'm waiting for the fucking full game to get released. Uh, but what I played of it, it was, it was really good. And from F Busier 80 funny that yesterday was Killdozer's anniversary all right thank you for tuning into the two hour super chat stream <laughs> i'm enjoying that money i'm enjoying those berries while i can um if my channel goes down for whatever reason i hope you've all enjoyed the content <laughs> maybe maybe it'll get posted somewhere else in the immediate future a video up on friday e3 streams up from i guess saturday until tuesday and uh we'll see how it goes from there uh, best of luck to everybody. Welcome to the Black Pill, where everything's shit and on fire. Isn't that lovely? Are we all Thank you, Carlos, for helping the internet get ruined just a little bit more. We all needed that. It wasn't bad enough. We needed you to intervene and just make it even worse than it was. We all really fucking appreciate that. Just great job. Good job, buddy. Good job. Uh, have a good week. Hopefully you have a good weekend coming up. Uh, you know, I, it's it, everything sucks right now, but there's a there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. E3 is coming up, and E3 is always a shit show, so we all can laugh at that together. 
we all can watch some E3 and laugh at that fucking train wreck together. So enjoy E3 this weekend. Uh, have a good laugh at it. And try to forget about your problems for a little while. Thank you all for tuning in. And uh, I will see you all later. Oh, and... <laughs>